So this project is perhaps a little excessive. For the model in question and for the amount of time and money spent on this, but for me, at least it should be pretty fun. And that's kind of the big thing here. But the Backman Modified Hall is a model I've yet to properly add to my roster. The older models don't really look too great and the newer ones look a little bit better but command a price tag that I just simply can't justify for a modified old modified hall. However, I did get a chassis for one in a job lot and I picked up a damaged body shell for one for a fiver off of eBay and a spare tender also from eBay for a tenner. So I'm quite happy to say I now have a Batman modified hall, although it is a little bit rough. So it needs near enough an entire full nuts and bolt overhaul. It has received a DCC upgrade a while ago, uh, along with tender pickups. You can see those in a previous video, but now it's time to make it look a little bit nicer, or at least over the next few videos. Anyhow, we will slowly be getting there. So what will I be using to bring this loco back to life and up to a better standard? So uh, from Brass Masters, I've got an upgrade kit and uh, some coupling and connecting rods. From JE Detailing, uh, a reversing rod, an ejector assembly, and a smoke box door. So uh, from Phoenix Precision, we've got some buffers, handrail knobs, and a smoke box door handle. Uh, from elsewhere, we have uh, a Comet plate frame bogey sides, a spare chimney, some coupling hooks, some homemade vacuum pipes, and name and number plates along with some plastic cards, scrap brass sheet and some brass wire. Now that is a lot of stuff. Some of it would not have been required if I had a good complete model to start with. However, as bits like the handrails, ejector, reversing rod, smoke box door, etc. are all missing, I needed to replace them. There are a number of issues with the model in, in general. Uh, some harder to fix than others. However, one that, I, that will take a bit of work, but is manageable, I think is the length of the front frames. After measuring, I found them is approximately six scale inches too long, which equates to roughly two millimeters, which I know doesn't seem like much, but it does make a big difference to the front of this. And also just looking at the front of this compared to uh, actual pictures, you can see there's quite a bit of difference between it. So I need to trim this down. And in doing this, it will also mean that I can hopefully get the Brassmaster upgrade kit to fit, as this is a kit for the newer modified hall model, which does have a better front end, however, it is also about 10 times the price. So I'm sort of going into this hoping for the best to get the kit to fit, but seeing as this is a full makeover, I'm not too worried about having to make plenty of changes to get the kit to fit. So to get started, I just remove the lamp irons, and I also took the opportunity now to remove the buffers whilst the frames are at its strongest. Next, I measured it up and created a line to follow uh, with a hacksaw just to cut the front end off, which like any project like this is a little nerve wracking, but once removed, I have easier access to these frame infills. These need to be removed as more accurate ones are provided in the Brass Masters kit, and they will also help me figure out how much more material I need to remove to get the length right at the front. It was however at this stage, I thought about how much is actually being done here. And instead of trying to take it apart as much as possible and put as much of it back together and then installing the kit, that I should just basically build the whole new front end now. So I delved into my scrap brass box and picked up some pieces of brass, which I will use to make the frames sticking out the front. So yeah, this is when I set about uh, removing a lot of the front foot plates and stuff. Glancing at the instructions of the kit frequently just to make sure I wasn't removing anything that I don't have a replacement for. And also just looking at uh, reference pictures and drawings uh, just to get a gist of what I'm doing. So once I'd finished removing everything, I grabbed this piece, which is the middle part of the foot plate, just to be able to make sure that it will fit in the gap created taking into account the thickness of the brass being used to make the frames. Once this was the right size, I set about cutting the brass sheet to actually make the frames. I used a drawing from the Great Western Archive as reference, just to sort of get the angles and everything right. I didn't quite have any brass the right thickness, so I've taken two pieces and soldered them together for each frame. Once together, I compared them to each other to make sure that they were identical in shape and the angle was the same, 
and then I soldered them onto the middle foot plate piece. This took a little bit of trial and error to make sure I got it in the right place at the right angle and everything. But once I got it looking right, I trial fitted it and it was nice and snug. Next, I moved on to the lower frames from the kit. These were a little bit challenging to fit, not for any other reason than I was pretty much guessing at this point, as there weren't really any data and points on anything I'd done so far that I could really use. But once they were cut from the fret, they were reinforced with solder, as they do pretty much form the uh, back of the buffer beam, and with all this hashing about, it's probably gonna need as much strength as it can get. Then, using a bit of luck and hope, and pictures, and references and drawings, I solder them onto the outside of the new frames, eventually getting them level to each other, again sort of tweaking as I went on, making sure they looked right and where possible measured were equal. Then I came back to fitting it onto the loco and snag. As I've soldered these onto the outside, it's made this little unit a little bit wider and therefore it no longer fits. So again, a little bit more filing and I got it to fit. Next, the smoke box saddle. I'll only be soldering the front section as the sides are a little bit trickier and just sort of go around the outside. Uh, I'll just glue those on at a later date. Uh, but the front piece can be soldered straight onto the back of the foot plate and then reinforced with the piece supplied in the kit. A little bit of trial and error again to get a good fit and a good solid join. Next was a bit I was a bit worried about, the curved foot plate. Anything curving brass, I'm pretty pants at it. However, I had little to be worried about. As the instructions said, I needed uh, something with a five millimeter shaft diameter, and this connecting rod spinner that I had just so happened to be the perfect size. And so a little bit of forming around this gave me two perfect curves on the first go, which I'm not going to lie, completely shocked me. Brass masters have even included some spares of these parts in case a mistake is made, which I 100% expected to need. But however, once I had the curve, I soldered them in place, ensuring a good fit and that they were level. Before cracking on with some more underframe detail, now is probably the best time to fit the lamp irons, which, super simple. Put them through the hole, bend them over, and uh, affix in position. So now, onto underneath the frame. We have these little brackets, which took some serious reading of the instructions to try and understand where and how they were fitted to the model. Uh, the larger part, however, is attached to the frames, and then this triangular bit fits in a small hole at the bottom and reinforces the buffer beam. I initially opted to solder them on, but when I inadvertently unsoldered the curved frames and lower frame portion, and then said many, many words that would get me in trouble, I changed my mind and super glued them on, after soldering everything back together and uttering more distasteful language. The last part, figuratively for now, uh, involved the side parts of the smoke box saddle. Uh, to fit these, I removed the outside steam pipes, and fun fact, these are handed, as I found out when refitting them later on. So, the saddle sides are cut out, and then on the back, a line is scored uh, one millimeter up from the bottom, and that is used as a fold line to give just a slight angle. And when fitting these back onto the model, the rivet detail needs to be removed first from the, the model just to get the best fit. Uh, I then offered up the front section as well, just to make sure a good fit between the sides and the front part of the saddle could be obtained. And then these were just super glued in position. Now, it's time to put the front end together. Again, I used plenty of super glue, which does seem a bit brittle and weak, but there's enough surface area here and points touching all over in lots of different angles. It should be sufficiently strong, providing I don't have a big head-on collision, which I can't say that I am planning on. After this, I moved underneath the frames, specifically to the bogey. The bogey type here is just a fairly generic early backman mainline one that isn't really the right type for this model. So it does need a little bit of work. Or so I thought. Keyword here being little, it's not little, but I digress. I have these pieces of a plate frame bogey left over from a comic kit, which I thought would look good if I just overlaid them onto the bogey uh, so I modified them a little bit just to get them to fit over the oversized plastic axles and overlaid them on the bogey and it wouldn't work as it makes the bogey too wide to actually fit between the wheels. So I tried 
filing the original bogey to fit just to make it a bit smaller and this wasn't really getting anywhere it was it was just wasn't working so i opted to build the rest of the bogey from scratch and from using spare parts that i had and also some of the parts that were provided in the brass masters kit so i grabbed from the kit the front plate for the bogey and soldered this on but as this was supposed to go on the plastic bogey whose sides are comparatively thicker than this brass it just didn't look right and the whole bogey was far too narrow so i took some new measurements from uh, bogies on other models and also from diagrams and looking at pictures and then i cut a new piece of brass and soldered that in position uh, whilst doing this i was testing the wheels all the time but with the plastic on brass i just couldn't get any good running out of it so i used some bogey wheels with steel axles i reprimanded from another project you can see how this project's just getting spiraling I was able to get good free running from them because metal on metal has far less friction than the plastic on the brass. Uh, for the bogey pivot, I used one of the spare EM or P4 spacer parts that came with the Comet kit. This required a little bit of trimming as uh, both these gauges are wider than double O gauge, but it didn't have to be too perfect, so I just sort of cutting it down and making sure it fitted square. Uh, the hole in the middle of this was then enlarged so that the pivot fixing from the chassis would actually fit because again why would anything fit in this project this was then soldered onto the rest of the bogey again continuing the testing with the axles to ensure free running next a bit of scrap brass was used to hold the width of the bogey at the rear it doesn't look all that it just it doesn't need to look all that it's purely just to hold the uh, bogey together I then used a little bit more scrap brass just to hold the axles in place and to stop them from dropping out. The front guide horns were then bent with some tweezers to get the right shape and to have them pointing over the rail. Lastly, again from the Brass Masters kits, we're using these little rivet strips for, for the front bogey face. I used super glue again to attach these to the bogey as I did not fancy accidentally undoing some of the soldering again. Yeah, these are handed just to let you know so make sure you get them the right way around or you know don't just to annoy that rivet counter in your life uh, before calling it quits now i decided to build up the buffer beam uh, so i glued on the buffer shanks filled in the coupling hole and then redrilled the hole for the new hook as this is a lot thinner than what was previously attached uh, attached the hook and made and fitted some vacuum pipes Again, this was just a bit of brass wire and some 50 gauge guitar string. Don't ask me what key it is, I have no idea. I also refitted the outside steam pipes, again, making sure I get these in the right way around, as they are handed, as I found out. Uh, so make sure you get them in the right way around, otherwise they just won't fit properly. And alas, I think this is a good point to stop for now, otherwise this could just go on forever. So far, this medium project has spiraled slightly out of control and is becoming quite in depth and borderline pointless with how much I'm changing and how much I'm doing. I should have just bought one of the newer models, really. However, I am enjoying this. No matter what I tell you, I am enjoying this and hopefully we'll have a fairly unique model in the end. Whether or not that will be a good unique yet is yet to be known, but I've got my fingers crossed. Thank you for watching, and if you have got this far, please like and subscribe and tell your milkman about me, because 